today we are discussing about the binary counters in digital electronics the contents the outline of my lecture is the definition of the counters characteristics classifications then asynchronous counter up to the limitations of the ripple counter before we start with the basics of the counters let me make you to understand that in digital electronics we got two types of circuits one is combinational circuit the combinational circuit is a circuit wherein the output depends upon the combination of the inputs and uh, multiplexer demultiplexer encoders decoders these are the examples of uh, combinational circuits the other circuit which is of uh, notable usage is sequential circuit the sequential circuits are the circuits wherein the output not only depend upon the combination of the inputs but also the previous stored value it means we need to have a one memory element in sequential circuit and uh, the good examples of sequential circuits are flip flops registers and of course the counters that we are going to discuss today so first of all i start with the definition of the counters as the name implies that uh, counter is a device which can count the counting is a continuous process in our real life applications sometimes we need to count the number of steps in an operation sometimes we need to count the number of uh, times one event occurs so for that purpose we need to have a counter so as i told you that counting is frequently required in digital computers and other digital systems to record the number of events occurring in a specified interval of time so a counter is a sequential circuit it has some states through which it goes before it recycles again and uh, the triggering in the counters takes place with the help of uh, clock pulses so this is uh, the one circuit diagram that i have shown you of uh, counter and uh, this is the state diagram and this is the circuit diagram now the next question is the makeup of the flip flops the makeup of the flip flop is combination of flip flops they are arranged in a cascading manner it means the number of flip flops that we are making use decides the number of states in a counter so the number of flip flops used and the way in which they are connected determine the number of states and also specific sequence states that the counter goes through during goes through the each complete cycles the flip flops we commonly make use to make up the j to make up the counters is jk flip flops but we can also make use of t type flip flops now the question is why we are making use of jk or t flip flop we know that the property of jk flip flop is that whenever the inputs of jk flip flops are high means when they are attached with a one then it flips it actually toggles the transition it toggles the value already stored in it same way when t is put in high value the previous value is actually toggles and in counters obviously we need to toggle the values because we need to proceed from 0 1 from one state to another see the sequence so we need to have a flip flop which can change its value so that's purpose we see here this is jk flip flop we got two outputs of uh, jk flip flops q and q bar now see the jk inputs they are tied together to the value 1 so whenever this value is 1 the previous value stored toggles here is the clock pulse is applied and the type of the clock that we actually tie with the flip flops 
it decides whether the flip flop is synchronous or asynchronous. So, in the next diagram, I will show you the characteristics of the counters. Now, the maximum number of the states that a counter can count decides its modulus. So, in, in uh, simple terms, I can say that the modulo is the number of the states through which the counter passes during its uh, operations before it roll back to 0. For example, 2 bit counter then it will it is known as mode 4. If it is a 3 bit counter then it is known as a mode 8 counter. These counters are also known as a divide by n counters. Divide by n means the clock frequency at the final stage is divided by n which was there at the first stage of the input to the flip flop. It means the most significant flip flop which is uh, furthest from the clock pulse, it divides that clock pulse by n. So, the counter can count in up direction or in down direction. So, it can count in either of the directions. It can be monostable or astable. Monostable means once it starts then it terminates. But astable means it actually goes on counting again and again. So, it has some uh, logic circuits that store some information that I told you that we have a memory element in it to store its value. And the output pattern is known as a state. These are the states actually. See from, from 0 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and then back to the 0. So, it recycles after all the combinations have been exhausted. This is one of the example of a 3 bit binary counter. So, the counting sequence of a binary counter is from 0 to 2 raised to power n minus 1, where n is the number of flip flops that we are making use. For example, if we are making use of 3 flip flops, then the sequence will be 0 to 2 raised to power 3, 8, 8 minus 1 means 7. So, from 0 to 7 and see the state diagram. This is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. The maximum step that it achieves is 7. Now, the classification of the counters. I told you that the way the clock is applied to the first flip flop decides what type of counter it is. Based upon that, we have two types of counters. One is asynchronous counters and the other one is synchronous counter. In asynchronous counters, the flip flops are not clogged simultaneously means the only first flip flop gets the clock signal and then the output of that signal serves as the input clock for the next flip flop and this process continues until we are with the last flip flop which is actually also known as a most significant flip flop and the flip flop which is which is directly connected to the clock pulse is known as a least significant flip flop. The other flip flop is synchronous counter in which all the flip flops are cl clogged simultaneously. It means the flip flops which we have cascaded, they are getting the clock at the same time. It is not like that we are going to feed the clock only to one flip flop and then it ripples from one flip flop to another flip flop. These are some of the differences of synchronous and uh, asynchronous counters. Like I told you that uh, the synchronous are clogged at the same clock pulse, but asynchronous they are not clogged at the same clock pulse. They are faster, but asynchronous is a little bit slower because there is a propagation delay from one flip flop to another. And suppose if the number of bits are increasing, and the number of flip flops we are going to increase, then there is additional propagation delay. So, they are somewhat very slow as compared to synchronous. 
their design is complex. Why actually design of synchronous counter is complex? Because we need to have some feedback line in the form of some memory element because the, the output also depends upon the previous value stored. So the design is somewhat complex. But here the design is relatively easy because we need not to have any memory element and there is no connection to the memory element in asynchronous counters. So the decoding errors are not present, but here the decoding errors are present. That is again because of the number of flip flops that we are going to increase and because of that propagation delay, some errors can happen. Any required sequence can be designed, means I can design any number of flip flop which goes through different state. For example, I can have a counter which goes from 2, then 7, then 10, then some 15. So any required sequence can be designed. But here in this case, only fixed sequence can be designed. We cannot have a random pickup of the states in asynchronous counters. So ripple counter or asynchronous counters. I told you that they are known as ripple counters because the clock ripples from the lost sig lower significant flip-flop to the most significant flip-flop. So that is the case of the rippling effect in the asynchronous counters. That is why they are known as a ripple counters. So the ripple counters are connected in such a way that the output of the first flip-flop drives the clock of the next flip-flops. Obviously, they are not collected, uh, they are not clogged simultaneously. Circuit is very simple and I told you that they are also known as a ripple counters. Now, the next question is, how many flip-flops are required to construct a mode and counter? This is the equation that we need to follow. N is the number of states that it goes through. 2 raised to power m, m means the number of flip-flops that we are making use. So this equation should be satisfied to design a modulo n counter. For example, if I need to have mode n counter, then obviously I need to have the number of flip-flops too. This equation can be validated for any number of counter corresponding to the number of flip-flops we can use. For example, mod n13, we need four flip-flops because with the help of three flip-flops, our purpose is not solved because in three bit flip-flop, the states are from zero to seven, but we need to have 13 in the sequence number. So two raised to power four means 16. So 16 minus one means 15. If the count is 15, obviously then the 13th count can be easily accommodated here. These counters are designed using JK flip-flops more and T flip-flops with logic 1 can also be used because JK or T flip-flop, whenever they are in the toggle mode, they actually can change their state upon the triggering or we can say that upon the application of the clock pulse. So, the first uh, counter that I am making use is 3-bit asynchronous ripple counter. I told you that 3-bit means the states can be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. This is the state diagram of 3-bit asynchronous and also this is the example of up counter. I told you that the counters can count in either direction. They can count in uh, up sequence like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 or in a down manner like 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So this is an example of a up counter. This is the circuit diagram. See, we have three flip-flops. They are named as FF naught, FF1, FF2. This is known as least significant flip-flop and this is known as most significant flip-flop. The inputs of FF node, they are tied together with high value 1. 